What's up, Everyday Blades? Man, I got a cool knife here today. This is a pretty popular knife. Unfortunately, it's discontinued, as are most cool knives. This is the uh, Spyderco Nirvana. The higher-end Spydercos come with these really cool cases instead of the red box, and I, I appreciate that. <clears throat> so this design is by Peter Rosenti, who is also famous for another great Spyderco, the Paysan. Love this one. Love the finishes on the Paysan. Um, <clears throat> so I've seen this knife a lot. Uh, I've posted many times that I was in search of one. Uh, got very, very lucky and had a member. I just got a little smooge on there. Had a member in my group who had one. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised when I got it because, you know, he said it was in new condition. But... A lot of people say that, and it ain't quite a new condition. This thing was brand new. Uh, he even put skiff bearings in it, and then I think he stuck it back in the package and stuck it in his safe. So it was brand, brand new when I got it. So the shape, the, the blade shape and the handle shape has always appealed to me. Uh, the milling on the outside of the scales is kind of cool. Uh, I could take it or leave it. Uh, it's definitely... Uh, a sign that they were great machinists because they continue all the way around it's 3d machining right uh, the one thing <clears throat> about this knife that of course stands out above most other knives is that it's an integral it's machined out of one block of titanium which takes some pretty uh pretty good machining skills the paisan is also the same way i mean I, there's one thing to be said about machining an integral to do one custom knife, but to mass produce it, <clears throat> I would imagine that would be a whole different thing. And I've said that a lot about Spyderco and their Tai Chung factory. They, they consistently spit out really great knives and I appreciate that. <clears throat> so the, uh, aside from the milling on the outside of the scales for the design, I really, really wish they had not done a stone wash finish on that awesome blade. You know, the Tai Chung Factory does an amazing polished stone wash. I mean, it's just beautiful. It feels like a mirror. And I wish they had continued that on here. <clears throat> I may end up sending this out for a regrind and, and having the blade polished because I think that would really do this knife some justice. But still thinking about that. Um, we'll see. They also went with a nicer pocket clip on this one. They didn't go with the standard Spyderco clip, which was, I think, a good call. Uh, I don't have a big problem with the Spyderco spoon clip, but you know, when you get up in these higher end knives, you need something a little bit nicer. So let's check some measurements. First, let's put it up against the PM2, because most people are familiar with the size of the PM2. And I'll check it against the Medford. Slim Midi Marauder. You can see it's bigger than the Medford. It's also thicker than the Medford. Which a lot of knives are thicker than the Medford Slim Midi Marauder. The action is really good on this. The lock bar is a little bit tight. Um, and I'm famous for loosening up lock bars to get a better action. I do pretty well with Medford's. Uh, getting them to run right. When you get a Medford, it's really stiff. Uh, it's almost frustrating, <clears throat> especially if you're you're new to Medford. You don't realize how stiff they really come, and it takes a long time for them to loosen up. Well, I, I have a method I've kind of perfected that I can bring a, a Medford from uh, not operating very good at all to, you know, drop shutty really smooth. Um, but on integrals, I don't mess with them. <clears throat> if you unspring that, uh, lock bar, I am not aware <laughs> of a way to put the spring back in that lock bar because of the way this is designed. So, uh, Other than maybe heating up the titanium, I don't know. It's th nothing that I would be willing to do to it, I assure you of that. So, let me take some measurements here and see what we're cooking with. So the blade is about three and three quarter. And the, skid, the skid, handle scales are about four and three quarter. Overall, about at eight and five eighths. So, 
let's check the weight on it since we got the scale right here. <clears throat> and for those of you who aren't familiar, this scale is what I use for everything. I use it for shipping packages. I use it for weighing knives. I'll zero it out. It's super, super accurate because it's designed for uh, measuring Freon. And you do have to have it on a stable base. Zero. 4.5 ounces, not bad. Under five ounces is great for me. I mean, it's a pretty thick, beefy, solid knife, so it's gonna have a little bit of weight to it. But anything under five, six ounces, I think it's fine. I don't get too bogged down in weight until I get up over 10 ounces, and then it's like, it could be a little bit of a burden. I have, you know, knives like my Tactical Fighter Flipper with Medford. I mean, that's <laughs> pocket sore, but we don't worry about weight with that. We only carry that on certain occasions. But anyway, that is the Spider Co. Nirvana by Peter Rosenti. Uh, he actually has, I believe, custom versions of this and custom versions of the Pison. Um, I'm fans of both of them. I'm probably going to send this out for a regrind and get the blade polished uh, and just keep this one. So it'll go to the permanent collection. Guys, thanks for watching. God bless you and your families. Say a prayer for our country. Good night.